Hey guys, me, Robert Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. First stop is up to Crystal Mountain in Washington. Guys, it is so good to see the snow coming down. Elevation of this camera is about 5,000 feet, so unquestionably the rain, snow line, or freezing level has started to come down. And I think in places like Crystal and Stevens Pass and Baker, Heather Meadows, I think that freezing level will come all the way down to like 3,000 feet. So we're going to see snow in places that we have not seen snow in at least a week. I mean, it's been a long, long time. Um, their banner up at the top, mountain stays closed to at least Thursday, 12, 18. They have, to, they have to do a lot of things. They've had rain. It's been too warm. They have to rebuild the base. They've got a lot of work to do, unfortunately. But um, So that's the case. Good to see that. Things are changing. Um, through the interior, I'm calling this Windy Wednesday. So this is the view up at uh, Jackson Hole. It is, it's heavy snow, but it's also blowing snow. It's, it's, it's high winds. In places like, and I'll break down the winds in a second, in places like Wyoming and Colorado, I'm expecting close to 100 mile per hour wind gusts today. I mean, it is gonna be off the hook with a, let me just go to Jetstream and let me show you a little bit about this. So we've got this powerful jet streak moving this precip from basically west to east. And it's a, almost a 200 mile per hour jet streak today that's going to be nosing or knifing in. And so big wind in Utah, Idaho, Montana, especially Wyoming and Colorado where that pressure grading is really going to get pinched. But notice we've got blue on the map up here across the Pacific Northwest, the high cascades, the volcanoes, in places that we were mainly seeing green, which is rain, over the last seven days. Um, there's your precip smacking into the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, and eventually it's going to build today over the top of the Wasatch. Let me take you into Salt Lake. Here's the radar. So you can see the batches of moisture here kind of crossing northern Utah. I do expect precip over the top of the Wasatch to develop. One of the issues, and I've got good news and bad news for Utah and Colorado specifically in this forecast. While it's going to be windy today and I do have some precip, it's going to be fairly warm. Uh, we're, we're just not going to see that that colder air like we're going to see to the north. I, I, at times it may come in to the Wasatch, but it's not going to be significant. Unfortunately, it's going to be fairly warm in the extended forecast. Let me go to uh, water vapor satellite imagery here. So you see this pocket of orange right here? That's drier air. Uh, and you see this, this big arc of... Uh, uh, moist air, that's water vapor, and the whites and the blues. This is a unique feature. That's the jet streak. That's about a 200 mile per hour jet streak. Super high winds up in the upper part of the atmosphere at about 30,000 feet. So you just picture the jet streak, jet stream coming in right here, sort of escorting all this. That's what uh, is going to create some of this very high wind. We're going to pull that down um, to, to lower elevation. So uncomfortable today to say the least. I, I'm guessing a lot of chairlifts once this wind settles in will not even be able to run. It'll just be too windy, too dangerous. Um, let me show you my bullet points. A lot of little important things to talk about here. So windy Wednesday, 100 mile per hour wind gusts in Wyoming and Colorado, 80 mile per hour wind gusts over the highest peaks of Utah and Montana. So very uncomfortable. Three storm systems, we've talked about that. Okay, rain snow line. I think it's gonna come all the way down to 3,000 feet in the Pacific Northwest over the high Cascades and the high volcanoes. Now, different story through the interior. Idaho, I think the rain snow line's gonna be down to about 5,000 feet at times. So not quite as low, but lower for sure from where you've been. The exception, the unfortunate exception Utah and Colorado, I, I think it's going to stay fairly warm with rain, snow line, freezing levels somewhere between eight and 10,000 feet at times all the way through 1223. So in the previous days when I talked about, okay, the question is how deep will these storm systems go into Utah and Colorado? They're going to go into the states, into the northern part of both states, but the cold air is going to have a difficult time making it in there. So with places like Park City, it's probably going to be rain in the city, in, in the Park City right there. Even at the base, it may be rain or rain-snow mix. Of course, higher on the mountain, I think mid-mountain and higher, it's going to be snow. But with freezing levels that high, that's going to be problematic. Here are your best odds of snow. Um, Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior, B.C. 
Colorado, you've got light snow accumulation coming this afternoon and a ton of wind. And you've got light to moderate snow accumulation, 1219 afternoon into the morning of 1222. In Utah, light to moderate developing today with wind at higher elevations. I'll preface that. And then light afternoon, 1218, light 1219 afternoon, light to moderate, 1221, and light to moderate, 1222. So you can kind of picture these three storm systems and wind sort of blowing these little pieces of energy through the Wasatch and the high Uintas. Uh, let me take you to the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at 11 a.m. today, Mountain Standard Time, Wednesday, December 17th. So there's your leading edge with lots of wind. Wasatch, high Uintas, Teton's getting smacked pretty good. Uh, let me move this ahead in time here and we'll look at it. All right, here we go. There's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard, wind and snow moving through Colorado. But that's just, that's all part of storm one. Then storm one moves away. Here we are 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Thursday. All right, here's 11 a.m. on Thursday. This is storm number two. You can see the leading edge of that moving into the west. There's 5 p.m. Heavy snow for Idaho, the Tetons, Montana, and the Pacific Northwest. I mean, look at those yellow shades up there. That is a higher intensity for sure of precipitation. Um, okay, let's go. Here's 5 a.m. on Friday, Mountain Standard Time. Storm's starting to sink to the south into California. There's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard on Friday. Um, let's move into the early morning hours. We'll end it right here. This is the end of storm number two. This is 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday, December 20th. A little bit of leftover precip right there in Colorado. And then storm number three starting to move into the Pacific Northwest. So that's how it's going to play out. Um, let me show you a quick time height. This is Berthoud Pass in Colorado in the Central Mountains, uh, just off I-70, off Highway 40 as you're heading into Winter Park. So three little areas of moisture here sliding through. You're looking at a slice through the vertical atmosphere all the way up to the jet stream. That's current. You go in this direction into the future three days. So a little bit of snow, but a ton of wind today. I mean, you can see the pressure fold right here with these wind barbs, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 mile an hour winds. Uh, that's really the big story. The wind is what will drive a lot of snow production. At the, it's just too windy to really get much, uh, two, three inches probably out of some of this. But these are just, I mean, these are just little packages of wind and snow production coming through. Um, the main storm snow, unfortunately, is gonna be uh, to the north. I mean, you're just seeing little pieces of wind energy come through here. Um, let me show you the um, pressure anomalies. So this is Thursday, early Thursday, 1218. There goes our windy storm system right here. And you can see this is the storm track essentially right here. And this is the, the windy side of it. You can see the pressure lines, the waviness of those pressure lines. And that's, that's the big wind right there. So that's uh, Thursday. Here's Saturday, 1220. Here's your storm track right here. You really want to be to the north of that, on it and to the north. So again, southern Utah, southern Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, you're just out of the main storm track, unfortunately. This is 1225. This is Christmas morning. Massive high pressure ridging across the plains with a drop in pressures over here, lower than normal pressures across the west coast and the Pacific Northwest. So that's where you would be seeing most of the action. And at times you may have pieces of this break off and kind of move into the interior um, through parts of Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and maybe Northern Colorado, central to Northern Colorado. Let's look at the comparison again. So this is um, for Christmas morning. So there's your AI model and there's your operation. We looked at the operational. AI is pretty similar got a massive high pressure ridge and then there you're dropping pressures off to the west. So pretty similar at this point for both runs on Christmas morning. Okay, let's go with uh, total precipitation over the next five days as if everything was falling as rain. So you've got some of these deep browns just on the verge of magenta. So that's what five to eight inches of liquid coming down there. Uh, so lower elevation rains and then snow at the higher elevations, of course. 
But, I mean, it's just like a fire hose shooting into Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. And again, a little bit down into northern Utah and central and northern mountains of Colorado. It's just not a lot. It's just not going to go deep, and it's going to be pretty warm in Utah and Colorado. Looking at a 10 to 1 uh, snow forecast here, 10 to 1 ratios, uh, five-day total snow. This takes us basically through the 22nd. Um, where you see the deep purples, that's at least six inches. The bright pinks, at least a foot. And these whites, that's at least two feet. So you can see there are definitely areas that have two feet. Tetons, Yellowstone, Wind Rivers, parts of Idaho, um, potentially up around Glacier, Interior BC, the coastal range of BC, the Pacific Northwest, the high volcanoes. And even down here on parts of the high Sierra above 10,000 feet, we're going to get quite a bit of snow. Um, let's look at the desert southwest vantage point. Total precipitation over the next five days. Again, some of it does make it down into the, uh, the southern high Sierra. Um, but southern Utah, southern Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, it's dry. Uh, let's get into my forecast. My totals here. So this is, uh, these are totals by the close of business on 1222, grand totals. We'll start in the Sierra, 8 to 12 inches. The bigger accumulations are above 10,000 feet. Uh, in Utah, in Colorado, again, the issue will be higher freezing levels, higher elevation freezing levels. So that's going to limit the efficiency of snow production in the atmosphere, but looking at 4 to 8 inches. Um, less in Park City, less in Deer Valley. It's just, you know, too warm. That's going to be the issue there. But you'll get better accumulation up in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon, Snow Basin, and Powder Mountain. In Colorado, most of the accumulation, 4 to 10 inches, is along I-70 and north with a ton of wind. The big stuff's up here. Two feet, no problem in the Tetons, Wind Rivers, Yellowstone. Big sky up into the heart of Montana. Uh, 10 to 20 inches will do it. 10 to 20 in Idaho, through Brundage, Payette National Forest, Brundage, Schweitzer, 10 to 20. Great stuff. Holding firm up here in interior BC, Alberta, with potentially 1 to 2 feet, maybe more there at Revelstoke. Revelstoke's had a very good run. And still looking at 2 to 5 feet up here in the Pacific Northwest, finally getting some good snow after a very tough stretch. Uh, so that's phase one. Let's go into phase two, guys. So here we are, 1223 through Christmas. So I'll take you back. That's through 1222. That's through 1225. 1223 through 1225. Just an itty bit there in Colorado. Just an itty bit there across the Wasatch. But big stuff as heavy precipitation slams California in the high Sierra. Even Mount Ashland, over a foot. Shasta's at uh, potentially a foot or more. But look at Tahoe down to Mammoth. If we can do this and we can bring in colder air, we can pull some of those bigger totals down to lake level or higher, potentially, we'll see. But Tahoe down to Mammoth looking at at least a couple of feet. So optimistic there. Up in the Pacific Northwest, still able to squeeze out a bit there. Baker up to Whistler and potentially 6 to 12 up here through parts of interior BC, Alberta, or less, obviously less there at Banff, less at Red Mountain. Um, and still squeezing out some decent amounts, maybe another foot over the Tetons, and big skies close. So, again, that's 1223 through 1225. Let's look at the northeast. Um, so a bit of storm sm uh, snow here, just a touch of lake effect. The storm snow... Doesn't deliver a ton. I will preface this by saying that it's possible that uh, these numbers look low because some of it's going to fall as rain at some of the ski areas, unfortunately, at the base of the ski areas. We could see quite a bit of rain mixing in. In spite of that, there's likely still going to be some snow accumulation. I shaved my numbers down a little bit. Grand totals by the end of 1222 here. I had to shave them down if... Half of it falls as rain, then um, you might end up with these types of numbers. Three to six, northern tier, one to two, southern tier. 
um, unfortunately, there's just a spike of warm air <clears throat> with one of the main storm systems during this period. And that just, that's unfortunate. All right, let's go back. 1217 to 1222. We'll end on the big western view here. This is when the bulk of the action occurs. Um, again, the issues, warm air in Utah, Colorado. <clears throat> and then your, your biggest accumulations are up here north of uh, Utah and Colorado. Wyoming looks great, Montana, Idaho, B.C., and the Pacific Northwest. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.